Hello, my wonderful students. How are you today? I bid you a warm welcome to this class. In the last class, we started probability, and today we will continue in probability. In this very lesson, we will be focusing on mutually exclusive events and non mutually exclusive events. We will also be touching probability instruments and how to represent probability functions using Venn diagram and set notations. Happy viewing. Let's begin this class with the definition of some events. A simple event is an event that involves a single element of the sample space. And a mutually exclusive event are events that have no common outcome. While the non-mutually exclusive events are said to be events that have some outcomes in common. In other words, they share common outcomes. Now, if we say two events A and B are mutually exclusive, then we can say that they are a disjoint set if they are represented in a Venn diagram. By so, we can say the probability of having a A or a B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. And also, if we have the event A and B and we say they are non-mutually exclusive, then we say they have something in common. In other words, they, are, they have an intersection if we represent it in a Venn diagram. We can also say that probability of having A or B is probability of having A plus the probability of having B minus whatever they have in common which can be regarded as the intersection between A and B. Now, before we use this to solve questions, let's see what probability instruments are. The first one we'll be talking about in this lesson is a fair coin. Now, every coin has two sides. The first is the head and the second, the tail. Because we have just one head and one tail in a fair coin, there are different probabilities is half. So, half for the head and half for the tail. In case you have two coins or you toss a coin twice, you can have four different possible outcomes, which are the head and the head, the head and the tail, the tail and the head, and of course, the tail and the tail. Our next probability instrument will be a pair of dice. A die is a cube that has a number engraved on all its sides. So, it has numbers 1 to 6 engraved on each of the sides. Now, the probability of getting any of those numbers is 1 over 6. Okay? So, if we have just one die, probability of getting any of those numbers has to be 1 over the total number, which is a 6. In case you toss two dies at the same time, or you toss one die twice, you have a total possible outcome of 36. Now, how do we get that? We simply interpolate the outcomes from one die, which is the white, with the outcome from the second die, which is the red. And we have the total possible outcome given right here on your screen. Okay, let's talk about a deck of cards. A deck of cards are shared into four different suits. The first is the diamond, the second the club, the third the heart, and the spade. Now the club and the spade are black while the heart and diamond are red. Each of these suits has 13 different cards in them. Now if I add them all together 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 or saying 13 times 4 will simply give me 52 different cards. So I have 52 different cards in the deck of playing cards. And here is the distribution. We have four different aces, the ace of diamond, spade, club and heart. 
and we also have numbers 2 to 10 for each of the suits all of them well represented and lastly we also have what we call the picture cards or the face cards three from each suit which are the jack the king and the queen let's see how to apply this to a question the first question simply say a card is drawn from a 52 deck of cards what is the probability that it is a black queen what is the probability of getting a black queen now here are our card distribution for a black queen it can either be the black of a spade or the queen of a spade or the queen of club just two of them so the probability of getting a black queen has to be two over 52 which is 1 over 26 question 2 simply says that a marble is drawn from a bag containing four white three red and five blue marbles find the probability that it is either a white or a blue marble now we have four white marbles three red and of course five blue marbles given a total of 12 marbles in the bag now the probability of picking a white or a blue marble is the probability of picking a white plus a probability of picking a blue mutually exclusive events we have it as 4 over 12 plus 5 over 12 i can break that down to give me 3 over 4 as my probability the next question here says Two dice are rolled. What's the probability that the sum is 4, 9, or 10? Now, the first thing to do here is draw out a table containing all your possible outcomes. How can we do that? Draw a table. Have the outcome of the first die being the white die on the horizontal, 1 to 6, and the outcome of the red die being the second die on the vertical, 1 to 6. And if you interpolate them, you have 36 different possible outcomes. Now, from the results on the table, I can have a possible sum of 4 as 3 on 1, 2 and 2, 1 and 3. That gives me 3 of them over the total number, which is 36. And if I go to sum of outcome being 9, I have... 6 and 3, 5 and 4, 4 and 5, 3 and 6. Four of them, I have it as 4 over 36. And lastly, looking for a sum 10, we have 6 and 4, 5 and 5, and 4 and 6. Three different outcomes. So we have 3 over 36. If we add this together, we have 10 over 36, which is 5 over 18 as my final answer this question says a bag contains four blue five red and six green balls a ball is taken at random find the probability that it is not a red ball now the probability of a ball picked not being red is one minus the probability that it is red the total number of balls here is 15 so I have it as 1 minus 5 over 15. If I simplify this, I will have 2 over 3 as my final answer. Now we have a different approach to this kind of question when you have a not. We can also have it as the probability of not picking a red ball as the probability of picking a blue ball or a green ball. So if it's not a red, then it has to be a blue or a green. The probability of picking a green ball is 6 over 15, while that of picking a blue ball is 4 over 15. If I add it together, I still get 2 over 3, which is exactly the same answer we had earlier. Our last question for today says, From a standard deck of 52 cards, a card is taken at random. What is the probability that it is a king or a diamond? Once again, we'll bring out our possible outcomes, which has to be 52. 
To have a king, we have four different kings in a standard deck of playing cards, which are the king of heart, the king of spade, the king of club, and the king of diamond. For our diamonds, we have 13 different cards. We observe here that there's a card that is common between the diamond and the king, which is the king of diamond. It can be found in the diamond. It can also be found in the king. This makes it a non-mutually exclusive event. Recall how we dealt with non-mutually exclusive events where we said when A and B are non-mutually exclusive, we say the probability of getting an A or a B is the probability of getting an A or the probability of getting a B minus their intersection. Now we have it as probability of getting a king or a diamond as the probability of getting a king plus the probability of getting a diamond minus the probability of getting a king and a diamond. If I put my figures into it, I have for king 4 over 52, for diamond 13 over 52, and for their intersection 1 over 52. If I simplify this further, I have 16 over 52, which is 4 over 13. That's my final answer. You're welcome back. I hope you enjoyed today's class in probability, talking about mutually exclusive events and non-mutually exclusive events. Till I get to see you again in the next class, be a good student. Bye for now.